Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig tutorial, and in this one we need to talk about the Diatonic Transposer. And this one is going to be a pretty easy to understand, but it could be a very important tool for you. So this one, what it does, it will listen to whatever clip or whatever is that you're playing, and it will, of course, be listening whatever you, again, from whatever mid incoming MIDI notes, and it will filter or it will constrain whatever notes that you're playing and it will fit it to whatever uh, key and scale that you want uh, right here. It's just kind of a weird thing to understand at the beginning of the day. I'm gonna go and show you how this sim simple this is. I'm gonna go right here and I get a clip uh, that goes from C to a higher C, right? From C2 to C3 and we are playing all the notes in between. So I'm just not really playing the scale, I'm just going from one semitone up and up and up and up. Right? Very simple. There we go. So, of course, uh, this uh, will not fit on the track, right? So maybe what I can do, I can go right here and say, okay, so whenever I do, I play this clip, I want to remove the notes that, you know, I don't want. So maybe I'm doing the track and the, the track is on C major, but some notes, some notes right here are, you know, not in C major. They don't belong. So if we go to the filter mode, to this one, it will remove the notes that don't belong. So if I play now, notice that we are getting a different vibe. And I'm using a little bit of reverb on this one so you can get a, a much easier kind of a sound, easier to hear. So it's just removing the notes that don't belong. And I can go right here, just record it so I can show you. Right, so pretty simple. I'm gonna go there and show you that some notes are just not playing on different places. Now we know that C major is gonna be all the white keys. So notice that we are not getting anything of the black. We're getting everything of the white right here. So it's a C major. Again, with this, what it does, it will remove the things that you don't want. So maybe your track is going to be on C minor. So this is going to sound a little bit different because it will only play the notes that belong to C minor. And notice we get a different vibe. So I'm gonna go and just make sure that this is doing what it's supposed to. And notice we get it. Yeah, we get it. Cool. And right here. So yeah, this is what it does. And it's very simple, right? It's just filtering the notes that you don't want from whatever key and whatever scale you're just selecting. Pretty simple. Now, another thing that this can do is going to be kind of a doing a, a, an offset of the pitch. Actually, yeah, an offset. it says right here, off to pitch offset. Uh, but this one, what it will do, it will move whatever you're doing. So I'm going to go to one and I'm going to go to C major. And we are still doing the filter. So it means that it's going to remove the notes that don't belong. But I'm going to go and do one step up. So I'm going to go and do record and notice that on this one, we start on C. All right. So I'm going to go and do play. So notice it sounded the same because it's the same scale, but it, it kind of sounded a little bit different. And it's because it's doing this, it's kind of a, you know, recognizing the notes, but it's kind of a, kind of a shifting this a little bit earlier. Notice that we can, we start right now, <clears throat> sorry, we start right now on the D2 and not on C, even though C belongs. So we are going one up. If I go to and do two up, it's the same thing, but it will start from the next one. So, which is E. I'm gonna go and record it again. Hopefully, let me just do this. I'm gonna go. All right, so it sounded the same, but now it is starting from E, which is a different point. Now, this is will not skip any notes. It's going from E to E. At the end of the day, the keys are the same. What we do is maybe shift the uh, the starting point in this case. So again, this is what the uh, mode shift this is going to do. If I go and do, I don't know, 12 steps, it's going to be pretty much the same, but it's going to be much higher. Right. So if I go and double check it, we're starting on gay. And, uh, and there we go. We get the same notes. So, okay. So that's what the shift is going to do. So I'm going to go and uh, do a double click. And uh, I'm going to go to constraint. So constraint is just going to be a little bit different. The filter can kind of uh, disposes the notes that you're not going to use, which is cool. But, you know, whenever you play something, it's going to leave a kind of a hole. 
So maybe you don't want to leave an empty space right there. So constraint, it will recognize that you're playing the wrong key. And it, instead of just playing the wrong key, it's going to move it to the next position where, you know, where it belongs. So if you're doing C major, it's going to move it to D because it's the next one that belongs. Of course, we always need to select right here what we want to. So I'm gonna go and just record. So now notice that we do get, don't get any empty spaces because we are not playing empty spaces, but it's just moving the notes that don't belong to the nearest note that belong to the scale, right? So that's what the constraint uh, is going to do. That's what it does. So, yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> I told you, this one is going to be very simple. So there are many ways of, uh, you know, how you can use this. You can use it as a learning tool because, of course, right now we are using a clip, but maybe you just want to do some playing with your keyboard, your MIDI keyboard. And uh, by doing the filter, it's going to not play the keys that you're, you know, playing wrong. Right. And if you're doing constraint, it's just going to move it to the next one, which is going to be a, it's kind of a dangerous territory. If you're doing something, uh, you, if you're trying to do an arpeggio, it's going to move it to the next one. You know, maybe you don't want it to the next one because maybe you're just kind of a, doing an arpeggio of a chord and that don't belong to the, to the chord that you're playing, but it will belong to the scale. Later, you can go in and make some changes if you, if you don't wish. But this one will help you just to keep on the same key and the same, uh, you know, the same scale in this case. And it's a good learning tool because maybe, again, you do something and you will just don't want to double check that all the, the keys are correct. You just put this one. If it's not filtering anything, it's because you're on the right key and you're the right or the right scale in this case. Not, I want to say key, but yeah. So again, this is what it does. Now, maybe you want a different tool to recognize, you know, where you are uh, standing. So I'm going to go and bring a different key, a different uh, uh, clip. So I'm going to go right here and bring an ARP, just a different clip. I'm going to go and play it. And we just get an ARP. Very simple. All right, we are not doing anything of this, so... All right, so this that's the sound. It's just an ARP. So maybe what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're playing... Uh, the notes that you're playing are on the right scale. So, this one will not give you that. Uh, if you want to do that, you will need to go and, of course, do some playing and trying to go to the next one, to the next one, until you find uh, uh, a key and a scale, in this case, that, you know, it's not, where, where it's not filtering anything. And that's a different way of doing things. So, if you want to know what, uh, you know, the arpeggio in what key or what uh, scale is, you can use a different plugin uh, because this is not going to give you that. You can use a scaler, for example. This is a great plugin from Plugin Boutique. Uh, I don't love Plugin Boutique uh, that much, um, but this plugin is just great. It's just a great producing and learning tool. So I'm going to go, and this one is going to give you scales. Of course, you can select scales. This is going to give you the different chords, you can create different patterns. You can go, of course, go right here and drag whatever pattern that you create right here. It's just a great tool. But this one, what it can also do, it can detect uh, the incoming notes. So in this case, I'm gonna go and just turn this off and turn this on, and I'm gonna go into the tech mode and just gonna record all the notes that are coming into, uh, you know, into uh, this track. So if I do play, notice it's just recording all the notes and behind the scenes, is trying to find the scale to match all the notes. And this is telling me that this ARP could be on A major, could be B minor, could be D major, could be all of this. Notice that it says notes, it's finding six new six notes and matching six notes. Then if you go back, notice that it's just, you know, finding less matches. But in this case, I can assume that this one is on A major, A major. So, okay, so now I know that this is an A major, so I'm going to go right here, just turn this off, go right here to Diatonic Transposer, I'm going to say A major, and I'm going to do the filter, and notice it's just not filtering any of those notes. All right. Okay, so another thing that you can do right here on this one, is to just start changing whatever mode or whatever key. And this is going to filter some of the notes that don't belong. So this one, uh, you know, what we are trying to do is just to get a variation 
of this, which is going to be a very different variation. So I'm going to go and just record it just in case. I'm going to start changing this. Notice that all the notes that don't fall inside C uh, G major is going to remove. But at the end of the day, what we care is not what, you know, it's really correct right here. We care about how it sounds. And we are getting a variation of whatever is with, that we are playing right here by removing notes. Another thing you can do is just use the constraint. And this one is going to give you new notes. It's going to move the notes to the next one. Notice it sounds different. And it's because it's moving the notes to something that belongs on G major. So you're kind of a changing. You're changing the key and the scale. I wouldn't say key, but you're changing the scale. You're moving uh, with the, uh, the things that belong to the uh, scale that you know. So you need to make sure that this is going to match whatever is that you're doing on the track because it's just moving the notes to different spots. You know, so it's kind of a kind of a changing the vibe and the scale. So you need to make sure that this one, um, you know, uh, that you, you use it correctly. That's pretty much it. In the case of filter, it just works a little bit better because you're going to be always on the same scale. But again, you get a different vibe. You're just removing notes. All right. So that's it, you know, that's the diatonic transposer. It's just a great learning tool, or it could be a great, uh, you know, a great tool just to get, you know, different uh, different patterns, maybe different variations of the same thing. All right, so hopefully you like this, you learn this, because it's a very simple, you know, it's a very simple de device. And uh, you really like this, you learn something. And uh, of course, hit the like button, subscribe, make sure you subscribe, and uh, see you on the next one.